So you clicked on this video because you want to know if you can save a little bit of money and go with an i5 processor over an i7 processor. And I'm definitely going to get into that in just a few minutes. But for a full coverage of the HP Victus and the HP Omen, I'm going to dive into some key differentiators and then we'll get into the full performance specs. Now do note, that the i5 does keep up without any problems on a number of benchmarks, but there's a few that keep me from recommending it fully over the i7. Now, first and foremost, let's just cover a few of the neat details regarding the HP Victus and the HP Omen. One of the biggest things is that you have an aluminum keyboard deck on the HP Omen where you do not on the HP Victus. You have plastic keyboard deck and just basically total plastic build compared to the HP Omen where you have the aluminum keyboard deck, and then plastic everywhere else. Both of them have pretty good build quality. The HP Omen seems to sit in a little bit deeper on the model I have, bottom cover into side panel, than the HP Victus, and they're both a little plasticky on the bottom, if I'm gonna be totally honest. We'll go ahead and check out the HP Victus real quick, setting this bottom panel into the side panel. As you can see, this one fits in just a little bit nicer than the HP Omen. Could be just the models that I have before me, but over the past couple of years, I've reviewed a number of units. And for some reason, the Victus always stands out as just a little bit more refined, especially the color. I really like the color compared to the HP Omen. It has more of this kind of matte finish to it. It's not matte to the feeling, but it has just more of like this speckled paint aluminum look, where the HP Omen is a little bit more of a smoother look. And the problem I see with that is there's a lot of fingerprints that collect on this smooth, darker finish. The HP Victus seems to weather a little better throughout the year. So I've done my one year reviews of both of these laptops and I will say if I'm gonna pick one off of the aesthetic and like the paint job and color alone, I would pitch the, I would pick the HP Victus as it seems to hold up a little better than the HP Omen from an appearance standpoint. Now jumping into the ports, we have almost the exact same port selection. All that they add on the HP Omen is going to be this mini display port. You can see it's missing here on the HP Victus. But on the HP Victus, we have the SD card reader, same as the HP Omen. Now jumping to the other side of the laptop, you can see we have the same exact ports on the other side, which would be two USB type A's. So if you're wanting that extra mini display port, then you should definitely pick up the HP Omen. Now as we open up the laptop, you can see very similar keycaps, but different layouts. We have a numpad on the HP Victus where we do not on the HP Omen. Now, I know that for a lot of people, this is kind of a killjoy. Personally, I would prefer the one with the numpad, not necessarily because I use the numpad, but because it just makes more sense to me. Honestly, when I'm using this laptop, I often am like, oh, where's the delete key? Because like, it's here, right? But there's these extra set of keys. And so I almost expect it to be in this grouping of important keys, but it's not. So I'm always like, uh, and it just throws me off. So I've been using in both of these on and off for about a year. And this one just seems more like a natural keyboard uh, layout. So when I go to look for the delete key, I'm like, oh yeah, it's above the backspace, like it always is. But for some reason here, I'm like looking at these grouping of keys, like expecting it to be there. Maybe it's just a mental block on my part, but I've noticed that that's really thrown me off. They both have full size shift keys, uh, but what you're gonna lose is the full size arrow keys on the HP Victus or you have them on the HP Omen. Now, one interesting thing about the Victus versus the HP Omen is the size. You can see the Victus is actually a little bit, you know, wider than the HP Omen, but the screen size is the same. They're just kind of aligned in a different position. So you can see the screen size, they're both 16 inches, 16 by nine aspect ratio, but they just have a slightly different chassis. Now I'm gonna pull the weight and thickness up on the screen so you can check that out there. They feel very similar, but the actual specs will pull up on the screen so you know the exact differences. Uh, now, one thing I really like to look at is the panel because the panel is something that can confuse people. If you get the 60 Hertz panel in either of these model, you're gonna have that low sRGB and low color gamut range like you're seeing come up on the screen now for the HP Victus, 60 Hertz panel. However, if you get a 120 Hertz or above, you can get that 99% sRGB for either model. Now, when you're ordering the laptop, if you're ordering from the HP website, and I can link those links in the description below, if you're interested in checking out the live pricing or the spec out options, you can select a higher Hertz panel, which will give you that 99% or above sRGB. So you could select the nicer panel for the Victus or the Omen. However, if you're purchasing from something like Best Buy or Amazon, keep in mind, you're gonna wanna read in the description that Hertz, the, the Hertz that the panel is, the panel Hertz, Hertz panel, 
Hertz rental cars, Hertz panel, anyway. And you're gonna wanna make sure that you have the 120 if you wanna hire color gamut range. So just keep that in mind. All right, that's important because a lot of people are like, wait, why does it have a low sRGB? Because it's a lower Hertz panel. That's just how it works. Okay, one thing you'll also notice the difference between these two laptops is the hinge. So we have the two hinges here on the HP Omen versus the singular hinge on the HP Victus. Here's a quick sample of me using the trackpad and keyboard so you can hear what that sounds like, then a quick audio sample, then a webcam sample. We'll just knock all that out right now. webcam for the HP Omen. Obviously, you're hearing the audio right now. It is a little grainy in the background, but the color of the skin tones seems very natural, and so it doesn't make you really orange or super blue or green, so I really like that about it. This is the webcam on the HP Victus and a little bit of an audio sample for you as well. Now let's jump into the performance benchmarks between the HP Omen and the HP Victus. What we're really looking at here is an i7-12700H versus the i5-12500H because they both have the RTX 3060 and 16 gigs of RAM. So it's pretty interesting because you look at the simulated benchmarks, you might think, oh wow, the i7 performs better. It just shows up performing better on a lot of the simulated benchmarks. So you can see Geekbench, you can see Cinebench, and they're all just looking better. But when you get into the real world benchmarks is where we start to see that there's not a big difference for a majority of the tests. First and foremost, looking at Blender, their neck and neck. So the i7 processor versus the i5 processor didn't make that big of a difference. Look at 3D modeling in Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya, PTC Creo, and SolidWorks, not a big difference. In Photoshop, same thing, a nominal difference between the two laptops. Now, even as we get into video editing, so playback at 4K, 6K B-RAW, and 6K RED footage, not a huge difference. I think 6K RED is we're seeing maybe the largest difference between these two laptops. Now, for export times, same thing. So the question is, why would you buy an i7 over an i5? And really the real reason you're going to do that is for what the simulated benchmark showed us, and that is the better multitasking performance. So if you're somebody who's gonna be running Spotify, Google, Premiere Pro, Photoshop, and maybe even After Effects all at the same time, then it would be beneficial to go with the i7 with more cores and threads, as there's less cores and less threads in the i5. But if you're somebody who's not doing all that multitasking, the i5 will be perfectly well, perfectly well. It'll be great for what you need. You saw video editing playback, you saw the export times out of video editing, and they're all very similar. Now, one place we're going to see a difference is in After Effects. After Effects likes multi-core performance. Some of the processes in After Effects will benefit from it. So if you're a big After Effects user, then the i7 would be a benefit to you. But other than that, you're really gonna get a lot of the similar performance as long as you're matching the RTX 3060, the RTX 3060, and 16 gigs of VRAM between these two processors. Pretty neat to see if you're somebody looking to save some money, I'd go i5 RTX 3060 over an i7 with an RTX 3050 Ti. Like if you're trying to make that decision, I'd go for the bigger GPU and slightly less powerful, slightly less powerful for the specs, CPU. Links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't want to miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.